Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. Sorry it's been a couple weeks since the last upload. My laptop charger broke, so I've basically had no means to record anything in terms of drum mics or anything. So it's been a bit of a frustrating time, but we're back up and running, so we're all good. So in today's lesson, what I've got for you is a great, great exercise for developing speed and control with your hands. So it's a fairly simple exercise as it's only got two rudiments in it, but the thing is, you start it out slow and it seems very easy, but as you pump up the speed a bit more and a bit more, it becomes a bit of a burner. I've been doing this all day and my hands are burning. So trust me when I say it is very great for just a warm up, you know, an exercise for developing speed, control, and just even just endurance. So it really works the muscles. The nice thing about this exercise, as usual, is I love symmetry. So you're gonna be working your right hand lead and also your left hand lead equally, which is great. I think that's one of the most important things you can do as a drummer. So again, symmetry for both hands is gonna be covered in this little exercise. So let's just dive into what this exercise is. So like I said, this exercise only contains two rudiments. You've got a paradiddle diddle and you've got a paradiddle. That's it, it's very simple. So what we're actually gonna be playing in this exercise is just two paradiddle diddles. So right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left. And then finishing off the bar of 16th notes with a paradiddle. So right, left, right, right. So the accents are just on the start of every rudiment. So because the paradiddle diddle is a phrase of six, it's gonna sound like an accent of one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a paradiddle one. The weird thing about this exercise though is because you're landing on that paradiddle, so you're going right, left, right, right for the last semi quavers of the bar, you're actually gonna start leading with the left hand for the second bar of the exercise. So we're just mirroring the two. So you're getting a back and forth between the right hand lead and the left hand lead. So what I'll do is I'll just show you this slowly on the pad so you can see what I'm talking about. So it goes right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. And then we do the exact same thing, just on the opposite hand. So we're reversing the sticking, so it goes left, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. And that's all it is. So it's just two paradiddle diddles and then just a single paradiddle at the end, which leaves it to lead onto the left hand. Then you repeat the exact same thing on the left hand. So once you're happy with that pattern, you can start to use it in context with a metronome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play it slowly and we're gonna do just another bump up tempo and then finally we'll do a really fast tempo as well. So you can hear it in context. Now if you're finding this difficult, don't worry because leading with that left hand is quite difficult to begin with. And this is what this exercise is actually trying to build, is try to build that left hand strength and endurance and bring it up to equal strength with your right hand. Because basically you're gonna be able to play this exercise only as fast as your left hand can go. So it doesn't matter if you're rapid on your right hand, you'll, you'll be slowed down with your left hand. So this will build the quality on both hands, which is really good. And that way that when you're playing fast singles, you know, you're going to be able to play them equally and it's going to sound much better that way. So the great thing about this exercise is that you can actually use it in context to just playing a kit. So it's not just a boring exercise that you can do, it's actually applicable to real playing in a live situation or you know, actually with musicians. So you can use this as a drum fill. So what I've done is I've just notated out a little, little fill for you that you can use and it's just the same snicking but you're just moving the accents around the toms and then the left hand accents on the hi-hat and finally the snare. So I'll just quickly show you that, it's just as an example. Feel free to experiment with different orchestrations and accents, but that's just an example of how you can use this little exercise.
Okay, so that just about wraps up the video. I hope you enjoyed this little exercise. And I promise you, if you do this 10 minutes a day, you'll see your hands become really strong and really controlled and really fast. So I implore you to try it out and have some fun with it. So I'll see you in the next lesson and take care. Great thumbnail, great thumbnail, Rowan. Good job. Hey folks, and welcome back to the channel.